Hi, thanks for tuning in. You're watching The Conversation. My name is Brendan Malone, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about the cult of politics, and in particular, why I think we should be fleeing from it as fast and as often as we can. There's been a lot of talk over the last couple of years about the cult of Trump and particularly within Christian circles about how much damage the cult of Trump has done to Christian credibility and, and how the wider world actually views the church. I think this idea is a little bit overblown though for a couple of reasons. First of all, I don't think that the church actually has this great level of credibility anymore in the culture. By and large, I think most people are pretty ambivalent about the church. It's like, oh yeah, the church, yeah, that's a thing, right? But it's not really like people are intently watching and listening and looking to the church as the sort of the voice of moral reason and moral authority. There's probably a minority in our society who hate the church and hate Christianity with everything sort of it stands for and are working actively against it. But by and large, I think most people are just ambivalent. And there's lots of reasons for this. One of the factors, obviously, has been some of the scandals over the last couple of decades that have come out involving church leadership and various moral failings. And they're pretty serious things and they, they really do uh, have a big impact upon credibility. And I think also there's the general secularization of our culture and the way people look at Christianity in general as a result of that. And then thirdly, I think that the church itself has lost its prophetic edge. The prophetic voice of the church is definitely not what it once was. What do I mean by that? Well, you know what a prophet is. They are the dude who turns up in town wearing the big bear skin cloak and their breath smells like honey and locust and they've got a big stick and they stand in the middle of town and they, they call everyone to repentance and they call them out for the things that are going wrong. They call everyone to account and lots of people hear them in the town square and they go, whoa, that's a bit much, mate. You want to calm down there. That kind of prophetic edge. That voice of the church, by and large, with some notable exceptions, but by and large, it has been lost. Secondly, I don't think most people are actually cultural train spotters in that way. They're not sitting there with an eagle eye on politics and on the public square and on mainstream media and entertainment media, sort of trying to ascertain what the trends are and what the deeper issues going on behind them are, what ideologies are driving things, what philosophies are at play and what this all might mean for the future of society. Most people are just too busy doing other things with their lives to be that obsessed. Some of us are cultural train spotters, but most people are not. For most people, I think the Trump presidency was a thing that happened, and they look at it and they go, okay, some people love the guy, some people hated the guy, here's how I feel about the guy, but that guy is gone, and so we just sort of move on. I don't think this is going to be one of those moments where people actually look and go, that was it, that was the moment my credibility was shattered, or my trust in the church was shattered, and I don't believe they have any credibility anymore, because some people who call themselves Christians who are also part of this cult of Trump. But here's the thing, these articles actually did get me thinking about this whole issue of the cult of Trump and I think they've actually misdiagnosed the problem. Yes, there was a cult, but I don't think it's just a cult of Trump. I think we have a problem in society now with the cult of politics. Yes, there was a cult of Trump. People who were just blind devotees who could see the good that Trump did, but refused to acknowledge any of the problems with Trump and the Trump presidency. They had this sort of blind cult-like devotion. So that was a real thing. But then there was also the cult of anti-Trump. And these were the people who refused to acknowledge that there was any good in the Trump presidency. And they ran around saying really hysterical things like, he's Hitler and, well, thank goodness we stopped the Nazis. That is just nonsense. That is not what happened there at all. But that's what happens when you're in the cult of anti-Trump and that's how you sort of view things through that sort of cult-like lens. There's the cult of Biden, the people who just refuse, who cannot accept or cannot bring themselves to say out loud the things that really should be said about the Biden presidency, the moral failings, the hypocrisy, the things that you know, clearly just aren't going as well as someone like to sort of have them seem that they actually are. Here in New Zealand, we have the cult of Jacinda Ardern, this Prime Minister who's been elevated and given this sort of celebrity-like status, and there's a group of die-hard fanboys and fangirls who won't actually hear a single word of critique said. And there's plenty of things that could be critiqued, but when you're in the cult of politics, 
and you're looking to a political leader for salvation and you're in a cult so you think you're in the in group and everyone else in the other tribe is in the out group and whatever happens we must avoid them and we must never ever question the cult leader you don't really look too closely there's a utopianism going on here, a desire to find the right set of political policies that are going to save the world, that are going to remake the world in our own image and remake it perfect. And all of this is dangerous and it's toxic because it just drives us apart. The more we give ourselves over to the cult of politics, the more tribalistic we become and the more convinced we become that our politics and our political leaders are almost above reproach and the other guys are the devil incarnate or Hitler as people were previously claiming about Trump. And so this is a problem. It starts to create this massive dividing wedge in society where we're no longer seeing people as human beings made in the image of God and with a profound dignity. We're looking at them through the lens of political identity. Who do they belong to? Do they belong to the cult? Or are they outsiders who must not be trusted? It's just so toxic and destructive. How do we counter this? Well, I'm glad you asked because that's really the million dollar question. I think a great example that we can all learn from is the three wise men in the Christian scriptures. You hear about them every year at Christmas time during the retelling of the nativity story. The three wise men who travel from their homeland, who leave safety and comfort behind them to pursue the star and find themselves eventually before the child Jesus, this child messiah and they worship and they give their gifts to him they pay homage to him they are wise for a couple of reasons and i think we can learn from their wisdom the first way in which i think they are wise is that they have a goal in life that is higher than power that is higher than politics they are seeking out a good and they are committed to finding the truth they want to know the truth of what this star is actually all about. They are seeking something higher than politics and power, and they are willing to actually take risks, to forego comfort and safety, and, and to travel across foreign lands to get to the heart of the matter, to find that truth. They have a, a good in their lives that is higher than politics that they are giving themselves to. And that's something we could all learn from. When we make the state the highest authority in the land and politics our sort of primary goal for saving the world, then I think we end up in real trouble. The typical fallibilities of humankind come into play and it doesn't take long for power to actually corrupt things. The second way in which the wise men were wise was they had a healthy skepticism of political authority. On their way to see the child Jesus, they stop and see King Herod. And King Herod learns about what they're up to and he says, I'll tell you what, why don't you, on the way home, come back past my place and you can tell me when you've found this new child king, where, where exactly he is, and I'll go and pay homage. Now, straight away, the wise men were skeptical of this, and they were right to be skeptical of this. They knew instinctively that something wasn't right when the most powerful man in the land, the king, is saying that he wants to pay homage to someone else who also has the title of king in his own land. They knew something just didn't quite gel there, and so they had a healthy skepticism of this political leader, and that skepticism caused them to say, hey, let's not go home past King Herod, let's go another way so we don't have to tell him where this child Messiah is, where this child Jesus actually is. And it turns out their skepticism was right because King Herod was lying. He didn't actually want to pay homage, he wanted to kill the Messiah. And when he couldn't find out which child specifically was the new Messiah, he killed all of the children under the age of two, all of the males under the age of two that he could actually find. They were killed. That was the real intent. Now, it was the healthy skepticism of those wise men, which was very wise. They had a skepticism of political power. Any politician who is worth their salt will tell you that power is a corrupting influence and absolute power is absolutely corrupting. The closer you are to power and the more powerful that source of power is, is that you are close to the more corrupting the influences and the healthier I think our skepticism has to be. Tolkien was right when he showed us those various characters in the Lord of the Rings who were prone to try and grasp the ring because they were so dedicated to trying to take power and control 
for themselves. That's the corrupting influence of political power, and we should be and should have a healthy skepticism about that. Not a nihilistic skepticism where it's like, oh, politics sucks. There's no hope. No, no, nothing good can ever come out of politics. That's a nihilistic skepticism. A healthy skepticism, which is willing to acknowledge the good, but also always recognize the temptations and the corruptions that exist around political power. So don't be a schmuck. Be like the three wise men. Have a good in your life that you give yourself to that is higher than politics. Don't be afraid to pursue truth no matter where that might take you and no matter how uncomfortable the cost is in actually pursuing the truth. And number three, always have a healthy skepticism of political authorities and you'll be right every time, I think. Thanks for watching this episode of The Conversation. Wherever you are watching right now, don't forget to subscribe or like or give this video a thumbs up and a share. All of that really, really helps us here at Left Foot Media. If you would like to support this content and you want to see more of it made, then go to patreon.com forward slash leftfootmedia and for as little as $1 a month, or as much as you'd like to contribute, you can support the work that we're doing here and you can ensure that more of this content keeps getting made. A huge thank you to everyone who is supporting Left Foot Media. Thanks to you, today's episode was possible. Thanks for tuning in. I will see you next week on The Conversation. Mm -hmm.